So today it's going to be viewer questions, and uh, Rosemary Carlson wants to know the future of Mar-a-Lago after Donald, and then Janet Murphy wants to know, will Ted Cruz from Texas survive re-election in 2024? So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video, and if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. interesting questions. Yeah, what's going to happen to Mar-a-Lago after Donnie's gone? I mean, Janet, uh, Rosemary Carlson actually says um, after Don Donnie either loses it or he dies. So uh, we'll uh, do a reading on that. And then the second question from Janet Murphy is uh, regarding Ted Cruz. He's a congressman or a senator? I have to double check. He's a congressman, I believe, uh, from Texas. And uh, she wants to know if he'll survive re-election in 2024. So we'll look into all of that and uh, do the drawings now. This is it. So we're gonna use the relative tarot for this one. And I thought those were very good questions from Rosemary Carlson. Thank you very much, Rosemary. And of course she was asking um, Mar-a-Lago, what happens to that after Donnie either loses it or he passes on? And uh, so we'll, we'll, maybe we'll actually address those questions even. And then um, Janet Murphy uh, about Ted Cruz, whether he'll survive uh, in 2024, the Texas uh, congressman, I guess it is. I really should have double checked that. You know, I can double check it now while we're just sitting here uh, talking. So Ted Cruz, uh, let's see, what is he? What are you, Ted Cruz? Ted Cruz. Are you a congressman? Are you a senator? He's a senator. So Ted Cruz, the senator from Texas. Let's see if um, if he's going to survive in 2024. Uh, the Relative Terror, this is a beautiful deck, and I'll tell you about it more at the end of the video um, so that you'll get to see more of the deck and kind of what it's about. Um, I should have used this little pole to get that out of there. I usually like to do that. And um, here we go. I'm a little discombobulated today. I've had a difficult uh, few days recently, and um, Kind of in a bad mood. Probably shouldn't be doing this when I'm when I'm grumpy, uh, but uh, we'll see if uh, this will change anything. But um, so Rosemary Carlson, you've asked to do a reading on the future of that beautiful estate, Mar-a-Lago, and it was always an amazing property. Uh, after Donnie goes away, personally, I think it'd make a great library. Presidential lie is in lies library to tell the story of uh, what happened there. I think the government should take it over and open it up as a library. And I, they should spell it L-I-E, library. And uh, the whole saga of uh, what happened with this uh, criminal uh, president uh, should be there for the world to see. And uh, there should be regular folks uh, running around, swimming in the pool, poking through what used to be his uh, fake uh, uh, presidential the office that he created and the rooms that uh, him and his family lived in. I mean, it should just be turned over to the public uh, and be a testament to um, the atrocities that took place there. But I think the first, uh, before we do anything, let's, uh, let's have a moment of meditation. Yeah. Mar-a-Lago. You know, it, when it was built, it was intended, uh, well, of course, the post-serial heiress, uh, is it Marjorie Merriweather Post, uh, created the place uh, as her uh, southern estate, and then she left it to the government, as a matter of fact, to use it as a winter White House, and uh, the government found it too expensive to run, and they turned it back to the, uh, to the Post um, Foundation, her relatives, and uh, they... Uh, tried to sell it for $20 million, I think it was, and uh, didn't get any buyers, and they kind of let it get run down, and that's when Donnie, Mr. Donald Trump, um, acquired it, and he did that. He made a low-ball offer. I think he offered 
I don't know, less than ten million dollars or fifty. I forget. I've done a video on it. If you look it up, or you can just Google it, really. But uh, which is what I did. But um, uh, they, they didn't accept his lowball offer, and so he bought a strip of land that's in front of it, between the property and the ocean. And he threatened to build a big, tall building there that would block any views from Mar-a-Lago to the ocean. And uh, once that happened, then I think he got it for about $7 million. He paid $2 million for that piece of land. So seven, eight, nine million $9 million for the beautiful property, all the furnishings. And uh, then he went about fighting with Palm Beach uh, so that he could live there and uh, eventually turned it into a club and lived there anyway, which he's not supposed to. So he's just, what a terrible person. It's a shame that that property has this terrible legacy after the beautiful way it started with Marjorie Merriweather Post. So let's ask first, uh, Mar-a-Lago, Donnie, will he lose it or will he die? And will the government get it? So Mar-a-Lago, let's ask the cards if uh, Donnie will lose Mar-a-Lago. Let's do three cards. So these cards don't want to fan out very well today. Two, will Donnie lose Mar-a-Lago? Just to get started with these three cards. Will Donnie lose Mar-a-Lago? Signifier card. This is the Page of Pentacles. So Pentacles are value. It's a valuable property. But the Page is the weakest of the court cards. And so this is just... <coughs> you can see here that this weak Page is just bringing a message. And it's almost like she's kicking this Pentacle out of the way, isn't it? She's got her finger up on her lip like... You know, so the, the first card up for uh, whether he'll lose Mar-a-Lago is this very weak messenger kind of kicking this value out of the picture. Um, oh, wow. Uh, the second card up is the hanged man, which is looking at a thing from another perspective. So I would say that kind of changes the use of Mar-a-Lago. And then the last card is a five of swords, which is uh, abuse of power. You know, for me, these cards indicate that that's probably what will happen. I'll put them in the, the order that I drew them. Will he um, lose Mar-a-Lago? Well, first we get this Page of Pentacles, this suggestion of kicking the value out of the picture. If that was were the only card I'd draw, I'd be inclined to say, yeah, that means he's going to lose it. And then the second card up for Mar-a-Lago, because this is about Mar-a-Lago, is looking at it from a different perspective, so a different use perhaps. And then the final card is this Five of Swords, which is an abuse of power, which kind of says to me that's what got this whole thing started. So I'm going to say, yeah, he's going to lose it. So that's Mar-a-Lago. And uh, we want to know, is he going to lose it? Um, is he going to leave the Trump uh, possession, whether it be Donald Trump or or the Trump Foundation, or the Trump family. Is he going to leave the Trump's possession before he dies? Let's do one card for that. Seven of Cups is illusion and delusion. Will he lose it before he dies? And we have illusion and delusion here. This says to me there's going to be some sort of hocus pocus going on about that property. Will he lose it before he dies? I think it's going to be in question. Uh, before then. Now let's ask very simply, is he going to lose it? Will it be gone from the Trump family after he dies? And again, one card. And we get the Six of Cups, which is a cups are emotion, and this is a, dis uh, a remembering the way things were. Huh. So I would say that's a repurposing, that's putting the property back to something closer to how it was intended as, as um, for use by the government, uh, I would say. And so, and this would be after he dies. So I think that's when this might happen. But now let's do six cards on just that whole question for Rosemary. Can I do a reading on the future of the future of Mar-a-Lago? Future of Mar-a-Lago. Period. Uh, whether it's before he's gone, after he's gone, is Mar-a-Lago going to stay with him, or is it going to be something else? What is the future of Mar-a-Lago in six cards? Okay. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. The future of Mar-a-Lago. 
and six cards. What is the future of that property? Okay. The signifier card is the nine of wands. The nine of wands is um, kind of being outside the boundaries of something. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. <clears throat> you can see that this person is kind of being uh, blown back by a storm. And you have to remember that Mar-a-Lago is right there in Hurricane Alley. So the future of Mar-a-Lago and the signifier is this uh, woman kind of being blown back, um, but is in front of all these issues that, that come up here. We'll read the whole thing at the end just to make it a clear statement. But as a signifier, this looks like there's uh, trouble uh, for Mar-a-Lago, and it could be, um, you know, storm trouble. Well, what's the challenge to it? The challenge to this, ah, things happening rapidly. So the fact that this is here, it's interesting. I wonder if Mar-a-Lago is going to have some storm trouble relatively soon. The basis of this then is going to be the two of pentacles, finding a balance. So yeah, the balance of the base of this thing would be finding a use for Mar-a-Lago uh, is what we're asking the question. And then the past of this for Mar-a-Lago is that it was um, uh, the property, I would say, of the Knight of Swords. Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. The Knight is the fighter for that. And um, so I was, again, I think that this uh, Trump is so wrapped up in his fantasies that he has felt like the knight, the fighter of his truths, but that's in the past. So all of that uh, hysteria is in the past of the, uh, of the future present, if that makes sense, of the property. In the sky of this with the four of pentacles is holding on to the value. So the, the Mar-a-Lago property is going to have the challenge of holding on to its value, which really uh, makes sense if you consider that it could uh, be the subject of some sort of storm. And then the final uh, outcome for Mar-a-Lago, its future, is, look at this, interesting. This is a tower, this is a beautiful property, makes you think of Mar-a-Lago, and disaster. I wonder if Mar-a-Lago isn't going to suffer some really bad uh, storm damage. I mean, it's right there on the Atlantic Ocean, right there in Hurricane Alley. So we'll read it all again. The future of Mar-a-Lago. And uh, this says, uh, with this Nine of Wands, it's, it's, it's embattled, okay? It's outside of the perimeter of a protected fence. Uh, this person is really getting blown about. It makes me think of a hurricane. I'm from Florida, so I know a lot about surviving hurricanes in Florida. Um, and then the um, challenge to that is this chariot of things happening rapidly. I mean, it could even suffer damage while he's still there, couldn't it? Um, the uh, basis of this is the Two of Pentacles finding a use for it, finding the, balancing that value of this property. This may be an issue that Trump has to deal with himself while he's still in residence. Uh, the um, past of this, with this Knight of Swords, is this Knight fighting for his, his truth, which is Trump and his truth are actually our lies. And then the, um, uh, or what are, we know are, are lies. And then the sky of this is holding on to that value. And so that could be the challenge of this whole thing is if it's damaged, if it happens rapidly, if it's finding a, a balance to what to do after that damage, uh, after he's fought for uh, his truths and holding on to that value. And then the final outcome couldn't be clearer than this tower card, which is telling us that um, it's a disaster and it's the end of an error and something new has to start after that. It would be interesting if, uh, if it suffers hurricane damage, goes um, fallow uh, like a field in, in distress, and uh, perhaps the government comes back in later and does something with it. Let's ask that one more question. Will the government ever go in there and do something with that property? And we get the four of wands? I think it will. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. The four of wands, I always say, some people call it the wedding card. I call it the card of smaller celebrations onto something larger. And uh, so I believe that's the story here. I think there's going to be some storm damage. Trump's going to have to deal with it. He'll probably have a damaged property. He'll be trying to maintain its value somehow. Uh, it's a disaster in the end. And, uh, and perhaps with this four of wands, a smaller celebration is on towards something grander. Maybe the government takes it over and, and renovates it and uses it, just like I said, as a lie, L-I-E, brary. What do you think? So that's that. Now, the second question we have is from Janet Murphy. Thank you, Janet, for asking the question. Guys, I don't know if you realize it, but it means an awful lot to me when you do ask questions. It gives me something tangible that you want to know 
and uh, then that I could focus uh, my energy on trying to get an answer for that. So Janet Murphy, let's switch over to Ted Cruz. Let's uh, kind of give the cards a knockabout. And Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz, Senator from Texas, will he survive re-election in 2024? You know, I should have looked up to see if he's actually, I guess he will be up for re-election in 2024. So uh, Ted Cruz, will he survive re-election in 2024? I'm just going to do, go ahead and do six cards on that right off the bat. Ted Cruz, will he survive re-election in 2024? Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Will Ted Cruz survive re-election in 2024? Let's see. Signifier card. Look at that. As you may know, if you watch my channel, I love it when the cards repeat because it kind of tells me they're paying attention. They they understand how I will read a card, and so they bring it back, uh, uh, knowing that I understand the message. So the Knight of Swords, Swords or uh, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. The Knight is fighting for his for his truth. Uh, this would have to be Ted Cruz in the fight. But what's the challenge? The challenge, oof, is the Eight of Wands. So many issues coming at the same time. And this uh, this uh, person here is kind of riding in on those on that wave of uh, issues. The uh, base of this reading for whether Ted Cruz will survive in 2024 is the Ten of Wands, and this is a heavy load to bear. The whole thing is predicated on this being a very uh, heavy uh, push for uh, Ted Cruz. And the past of this, with this Nine of Swords, is a nightmare. Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law, and the Nine of Swords is just a nightmare. We can see this maiden kind of awakening from that nightmare, holding onto that sword, but look how she's holding it. She's got her hand wrapped around the blade. That can't be a good uh, uh, omen. And, um, and so, but that's in the past of the future for Ted Cruz, is uh, having been through uh, some nightmare. The uh, sky of this, look at that, another repeated card, is um, balancing, and it, you saw me shuffle the card, so it's pretty remarkable to me when they repeat, uh, is balancing the value. So the, the whole thing he's going to have to do is he's going to have to find a way to, to balance his uh, perceived uh, value. And then the final card as to whether Ted Cruz will survive re-election in 2024 is the Ace of Cups a great big offer of value? And I'm going to say that it might be a hard fight, but he probably will. Let's read it again. See if I missed anything. So will uh, Janet Murphy says, will Ted Cruz survive re-election 2024? And the signifier is this knight fighting for his justice, for his truth, for his rules, for his law. And it's challenged by what? Eight of Wands, just a lot of issues for this person to write in on. And the basis of the whole thing is that it's a hard fight. It's a load. It's a bundle to carry. And uh, the past of his future is the Nine of Swords, which is a nightmare. So he will have come out of or have, have having dealt with that nightmare, I guess, of his past. In the sky is finding that balance, that balance. And it, you've got to remember, Ted Cruz is a very skilled politician. And the final outcome, because remember, he is from Texas, is a great big cup of compassion, and I'm going to say that this means he probably will survive. I don't like hearing it, but that's what the cards say. So, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, remember, we're going to talk about the cards right now. It's always very interesting how these cards come out. You can never uh, kind of prejudge based on what you're thinking. The cards are very independent and give you some very specific answers, I think. So, uh, I hope you like that. Let me know what you'd like me to read on. And Heck, I'll read on that, and uh, Happy New Year. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is the Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. Another great box, nice magnetic clasp, good, sturdy. This feels like really fine stationery would come in this box. So it's that kind of quality. And it's this beautiful color around. It's got a nice little introduction on the back that talks about the tarot and, and why it's depicted the way it is. And uh, this artist's questions for the cards. There are actually 82 cards here. So this Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. This is a deck uh, that will instruct you how to determine your tarot blueprint and your personal birth card and annual card, shadow cards and karmic cards. And there are actually 82 cards in here instead of 78 and I'll, um, I'll show you you know how you can use them and I'll explain why why that is even 
So we we'll start with the booklet, and um, it's a nice, uh, large, uh, beautifully sepia-toned uh, kind of a booklet with all depictions of the cards in there, which is always really, really helpful. In here, there are uh, the author tells you a little bit about her and her family and her personal inspirations for coming to this deck, which are indeed very personal. And uh, so a um, what happened here? It seemed like a friend um, in the guidebook. Uh, the, her, her, she was encouraged by uh, a fellow seer, um, and I don't think she was a seer at the time. And an, an intuitive friend suggested that she could communicate with the, her relatives for the past. And she says she did that to interpret the images and the pictures of the faces of the loved ones represented in the deck. So tons of personal intention uh, went into the creation of cards, which I love. And even a dear friend of hers uh, named the deck. So, but the. The deal with inside here is that there's two sets of cards, and I'll show you how that works. It's got a nice little pull here to help you get the cards out, but it comes with some extra cards in the pack, which I've tucked away under the ribbon, and I'll show you what that's about. Okay, in just a minute. So, they're, not, they're kind of actually a finish weight of cards, but they've got a nice glossy finish, and they've got a beautiful gold uh, gild on the edges, and uh, the pictures are nice, and they're kind of showcased in a picture frame kind of thing, and uh, lots of rich color, and it tells you under each of the cards how to use them, and then if you're going to use them, as she suggests, for uh, tarot, personal tarot cards or birth cards, it's got even numbers here, and tells you how to use these numbers um, for that, uh, which is very interesting, but I really think you need the guidebook to kind of get through that. So what's going on here with the extra cards? So for uh, the Lover's card, which is um, the number six of the Major Arcana, it gives you three choices. I've got two of the choices here, and there's one choice that I've picked here, and it's in the stick somewhere. <laughs> but uh, So this choice right here is two, um, two men. This choice right here is two women. And then the choice that I chose to leave in this deck is a man and a woman. And just because that's what I'm, I see is more true to kind of all the tarot cards. But I would choose these uh, interchangeably if, if uh, you know, it seemed like that was the right thing to do for that read at the time. So, so that's uh, two extra cards that you need there for the lover's card, the number six. Then... For justice and strength, they've been numbered hyster historically uh, in each other's place uh, with various uh, tarot cards before a certain period and after a certain period. Uh, so number, and here you have three choices for justice and three choices for strength with just three extra cards, period, for the, the deck. I've got two of the choices here, justice and strength, and uh, uh, two of the choices uh, inside the deck. So it's four cards, actually. So, and what happens is, in some tarot decks, historically, justice has been numbered as number eight. But in some tarot decks, it's been numbered as number 11. So it gives you that choice. You can either number them in the, the one full suit of, of the Major Arcana as justice is number eight and strength is number 11, or vice versa, which is what I've chosen to do, you can have them labeled as strength number eight and justice number 11. So that, and that way you end up with four extra cards uh, completely uh, in this situation. So that was kind of a long explanation, but it's always good to lay them out here no matter how you do. And you know, you can just leave all the cards in the deck and just divine whatever comes up at the time, I suppose. You know, what's wrong with that? As long as you understand what you're looking at and then if you get two justices in a draw, uh, be willing to, you know, etc. Or three lovers in one draw, be willing to decide how you're going to deal with that uh, as a rule of thumb before you start your readings. I would think it's a useful thing to do. Maybe you can just do it off the cuff. But these are, like I said, the relative tarot. Pretty cool. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So, ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.